The big weekend show begins with a Fox News alert. I'm Joe Concha, along with Alicia Cunha, Tom Shalou, and Lisa Booth. Tonight, the president of the University of Pennsylvania is out after she refused to call out anti-Semitism on her campus in front of Congress. Listen. Specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision. Fox News correspondent C.B. Cotton has the breaking details on the resignation. C.B. Hi, Joe. Well, word of President Liz McGill's resignation comes after widespread public outrage over her congressional testimony, as you just heard, on anti-Semitism. Scott Bach writing before his resignation as chairman of the Board of Trustees, quote, President Liz McGill has voluntarily tendered her resignation as president of the University of Pennsylvania. She will remain a tenured faculty member at Penn Carey Law. He also went on to thank McGill for her service to the school and said she'll remain on as Penn's president until a replacement is appointed. McGill also releasing a short statement saying it had been her privilege to serve as president and an honor to work with the Penn community. Now, calls for McGill to step down have grown louder ever since that anti-Semitism hearing on Capitol Hill, where she and presidents from Harvard and MIT testified for hours, all three now facing major blowback for wishy-washy answers on whether calls for a Jewish genocide would be considered harassment on their campuses. MIT's board issuing a statement standing by its president after this exchange with Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Watch. Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants, which can be anti-Semitic depending on the context, when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. So those would not be according to the MIT's code of conduct or rules? That would be um, investigated of, as harassment if pervasive and severe. Meanwhile, McGill's testimony was looped and displayed on this digital billboard truck, which circled Penn's campus, calling for her firing. The elite school also risked a huge financial hit after major donor Ross Stevens threatened to withdraw a $100 million donation. The board of the university's prestigious Wharton School of Business also called on McGill to step down. Amid all the blowback, McGill tried to clarify her remarks on social media. I want to be clear, a call for genocide of Jewish people is threatening, deeply so. But many, including Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, said the damage was already done. Stefanik taking to X this afternoon, saying in part of McGill's resignation, this is only the very beginning of addressing the pervasive rot of anti-Semitism that has destroyed the most prestigious higher education institutions in America. And that same social media post, Stefanik went on to call for presidents at Harvard and MIT to also step down, while also promising a, quote, robust and comprehensive congressional investigation into how the three elite schools handled anti-Semitism on its campuses. Back to you. C.B. Cotton, thank you. All right, let's discuss. I'll go to the girl wearing blue. And that doesn't narrow things down very much, now, does it? All right. Booth. We also have the same color now. <laughs> Good point. I, I digress. Yes. So in all seriousness, uh, Claudine Gay, she is the president of Harvard that CB just talked about. If McGill is gone at Penn, you got to think that Gay is probably gone at Harvard next because money talks. Well, yeah, and you've got to think of big donors looking at what Ross Stevens did and threatening to pull a hundred million dollar donation and then wanting to follow suit to try to, you know, get some of these university presidents fired. I mean, can you imagine what would happen on college campuses if students were calling for the genocide of black people or calling for the genocide of Muslims? I mean, what do you think the reaction truly would be? And liberals have set up a society where only some lives matter depending on your race and your ethnicity. And these university presidents are a reflection of that society. And I think Republicans have done a brilliant job this week, both with Speaker Johnson holding that press conference with students from these universities, and then also at the Education Committee with Virginia Fox and Elise Stefanik, holding these university presidents' feet to the fire and allowing the world and the country to see with their own eyes, their own ears, what's actually happening. And just to briefly take you through what some of these students had said, you have A.L. Yacobi at the University of Pennsylvania said he was called a dirty little Jew. Wow. By students and a professor. 
You had um, a, another student, Talia Khan at MIT, said 70% of the students polled there don't feel bold. They, 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 they don't, they're trying to hide their personal identity because they're so afraid of what's happening on that college campus. One student's identity was then, uh, it was, uh, they stole the, or they put the identity out there of the student, and he's been in hiding in the weeks since. And then on Harvard, uh, there's been calls to globalize the intifada. So this is what these students are facing on college campuses. And it, it's not just speech. This isn't a free speech issue. I mean, they were being bullied, they were being harassed, and they're in fear of their lives. Tom, at last check, it's the year 2023. And we just had less than, about two months ago, the most horrific, insidious attack on Jews we've seen since the Holocaust. Beheadings, the, the, the murder of babies, the elderly, rapes, kidnappings. And this anti-Semitism is out in the open. You would think the opposite reaction would have happened, but instead, it's a scary time to be Jewish on campus in America in 2023. Yeah, it's amazing. And the, the interesting thing about this incident and this time in history is that it didn't used to happen that way. You know, campus politics were always left wing. You had professors who agreed with bin Laden, essentially, in the 90s. You know, they wanted the same goals that bin Laden has. They said, get our troops out of the Middle East, stop exporting our culture to the Middle East. But once 9-11 happened, they weren't saying, oh, well, let, let's take a look at this bin Laden thing. Maybe the guy makes a point. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. most people weren't. There was a few wacky professors who were. But in this case, the anti-Semitism is so ingrained in college campuses that they think, well, no, this is the side we're supposed to be on. I mean, these people, they should have been advised not to show up to this thing. Were, were they under subpoena? Because that's the only thing that should get, get these fools to answer questions because they don't know how to talk. I mean, at least Stefana, God bless her, she asked them all the same question. And then, you know, after seeing someone get raked over the coals mm -hmm. for saying it depends to is genocide bad, the next one was like, I'll have what she's having. Uh, it depends. <laughs> it's almost unbelievable. In Stefanik's case, 17 times to the Harvard president, the same question, and she couldn't answer it. Yeah. Bill Maher, who's become somehow the voice of reason on the left, he ripped the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and UPenn on Friday night. Take a look. Right. See, what irks me is that, look, I'm always going to be on the side of as far as you can push free speech. Yep. What bothers me is the double standard. Oh, my God. Okay, say they don't want to say kill the Jews, mm -hmm. but I certainly have heard chanted mm -hmm. the Jews. Mm -hmm. the Jews. Can you imagine? I cannot think of any other group that oh, you yeah. could say the blank and, and have it be acceptable. If there's anything good that has come out of this, yes. it's that now you see what we've been talking about. For We were not making it up. It's all great points. And Alicia, as far as Harvard specifically, the Crimson has a student newspaper there called The Crimson. And they did a survey of professors on campus. And they asked, how would you deem your ideology? What, what would you call yourself? 97% said they were either somewhat liberal or very liberal. Less than 2% said they were conservative. So you could fire these university presidents, but until you change the ideology in terms of a 50-50 diversity of thought and ideas, this is going to continue. Yeah, and, and earlier today on Fox News, I talked to a student from Brown, a Jewish American college student, and she said this is part of the problem, is that it, has been, it is so ingrained that it is part of the fabric of these schools now. And the Anti-Defamation League put out a stat recently that you've seen all of these pro-Hamas protests all around pro Hamas, anti Israel, anti Jew protests all over the country. 62% of them are taking place on college campuses. So we see that that's where all of this is growing from, and that is it's getting worse. But also to something um, that Tom said earlier, over the next 24 to 48 hours, it's going to get worse for the two who are left, these two presidents who are left. Because you think about what happens tomorrow. The Sunday talk shows happen tomorrow. And then this is only going to become much more painful for the president of MIT and for the president of Harvard. And let's get this soundbite here because it's just so telling. A Penn student calls out the Penn president, Liz McGill, for her non-apology earlier on Cabuto Live. President McGill actually never said sorry in her apology uh, speech that she gave on Instagram, she made excuses for, for why she couldn't immediately condemn it. But what about everything else that has happened? And in my opinion, she keeps asking for one more chance and saying, we need to get it right this time. And with upcoming finals, if leadership wants to teach their students by example, then I think it's only fair that we adjust course policies to allow students to have as many attempts as they want on their final exams until they think that the right outcome comes about. The only difference is that when it has to do with student safety, it should be taken a little bit more seriously. 
Well, she wanted one more chance. Now she's going to get no chance because she is out. C.B. Cotton did another great report earlier this week, and I was on right afterwards, and I was writing down what she was saying because it was just so gripping in a bad way, where she went to a pro-Palestinian protest and asked, after everything that you saw on October 7th and everything the world witnessed, how could you possibly not condemn that? And most of the people responded, we don't believe the reports. Hamas taped all this gleefully. It's not reporting. It's not he said, she said. Literally, it's on video, and these people refuse to believe their own eyes, Lisa. See, I think they do believe it, and even worse, they condone it. Yeah. Right? And, and, I mean, you don't have to forget, there was a Cornell student that threatened to rape and kill all the Jew women before they give birth to, to more Jewish Hitlers, right? So, I mean, this is happening on, on college campuses. And it, look, progressivism, progressivism is a cancer on society. Because if you look, there's a lot of overlap with these different groups. Mm -hmm. You had Black Lives Matter post the paraglider yep. cheering on what happened on October 7th. You have the climate activists out there, pro-Hamas, right? So all these groups overlap. They hate America. And they want the destruction of America, and they're cheering this on, and it's disgusting. It's really a disturbing time to live in America right now. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.